In this video, I'm going to do an unboxing of a PAL PS2. So let's get to it. So this whole thing started with this game here, Michigan Report from Hell. Now back when I was a gamer, when I originally bought a PlayStation 2, I pretty much tried to seek out all the survival horror games that I could get my hands on. And I had heard about this game, and uh, I kind of passed on it at the time because there were two versions that came out, one for Japan and one for the PAL territories, but it never came out in North America. So I passed on it since I didn't have the availability to play import games on my PlayStation 2. But if I did want to get this game, I wanted to get it in uh, the PAL version because that's the only version that has English, an English dub to it. The Japanese version is obviously just in Japanese. So lately, I've been kind of getting a little nostalgic, and when the weather gets colder, uh, sometimes I'll pop in a game now and again. It keeps my mind going, it keeps my reflexes going, and it gives me some, uh, I don't want to say stress, but it gives me some challenges to do when I'm, you know, a little bit more relaxed inside my house. So I imported this game from Spain, and it cost me $50. This game cost me, it was a little over $50. And uh, that was about, oh, I don't know, about uh, three or four months ago that I bought it. And uh, it started with this game, and then it kind of went out to these games, because I had a PlayStation 2 that had the Swap Magic Discs, or actually I got the Swap Magic Discs. And if you're not familiar, long story short, Swap Magic allows you to play import titles on your PlayStation 2. You just have to do a couple of modifications to it. Nothing as far as soldering or chips or anything is concerned, but uh, just as far as the either the tray if you have a, a fat PlayStation 2 or the lid if you have a PlayStation 2 Slim. So I did the modifications on my PlayStation 2 Slim and used the Swap Magic Discs and uh, it really wasn't working all that well. So before I had gotten this game, I got this game on eBay and this game on eBay pretty inexpensively. I think this one was maybe around $12 and this was maybe around 6 or $7. Both PAL titles, but I purchased them to try out if it would work, if you know the game that I really wanted would work when it did finally arrive, because it took about a month to get here from Spain. Now the reason there was a month delay is because it was actually stuck in New York, and the package was damaged. Originally, I don't know if you can tell on this, but originally this was uh, sold to me in very good condition. But uh, as you can see, when it got to me, there's some damage to it and it's all water damage. Fortunately, I was able to dry everything out, but I've never gotten a package in my entire life that was actually literally soaked. So what had happened was, this was sent from Spain, and somewhere along the way, the package was submerged in water. Maybe it was left out in the rain or something, but it was submerged in water, believe it or not. And the reason I know this is because the original packaging was put in another envelope by the post office. And they, let, they gave me a note and they said, you know, sorry, this kind of stuff happens and there's really basically nothing I could do about it. So the original package, which was in the packaging that the post office sent me, uh, was still in there. And I opened it up and everything was wet. Everything. The, the artwork on here, the inside... It wasn't like water poured out, but there was still water in here. The disc was totally wet. This was totally soaked. I had to, fortunately, I, I salvaged, it, salvaged it as best as possible, but there was damage to it. Again, this was in very good condition when I bought it. You can see the damage done to the back there. But, um, so, you know, not a collector. I'm not a collector. I will be turning loose of all these things once I actually play them. I don't really think I'll be playing these all the way through. I will be playing this one all the way through, or at least that's my intent. These were just, you know, trying to get my hands on some PAL titles. I think this one's actually a ridiculous one, but uh, I got a good deal on it and it was sealed, so, you know, I thought, well, why not when I was looking up PAL games. There is one other PAL game that I do want to get my hands on, um, but uh, again, I'll just probably play these two. This is a platformer. Um, I did try this out on my uh, PlayStation 2 Slim with the swap discs, and it worked okay, but um, 
the swap disks weren't very reliable, so it was kind of frustrating. So I, I looked for a PlayStation 2 Slim on eBay, and I found this one for, I believe it was $48 shipped, which is a really good deal. It was an American seller. For those of you who don't know, I live in the United States, and uh, so some of these things might not be that easy to get a hold of over here. Obviously, in different territories will vary, but... Uh, uh, so I got this PlayStation 2 Slim, again, for under $50. So everything here probably cost me maybe uh, maybe $120, $130. When I'm done with everything, I'm going to you know turn it loose and sell it because, again, I'm not really a collector. Now, the spines, they get a lot of, uh, you know, people don't really like the, the PAL versions of PlayStation 2 games because the spines are very generic. You just have your PlayStation 2 branding up here and then the name of the game here. Whereas in the North American versions, you would have a very nice graphic here of what the, the, the name of the game is. So as you can see there, it says PAL there. So um, let's get this thing open. Let me grab my trusty cutter here and let's see what's inside here. So as you can see, it's in its original box. The PAL version is yellow, as you can see. But uh, the North American version looked very much like this, except it was white. So let's get this thing open here. I really do think I got a good deal on this for uh, just under $50. I get a DualShock 2, which is actually pretty decent condition. A lot of the times you get used items and uh, they're all gross and wrecked, but um, just by looking at the just the cord in and of itself is very uh, there's some rigidity to the cord and uh, looks pretty good. Looks barely used actually. Now here is the PAL cord. If you're from the United States, you know that that's not going to fit into your socket. 7.5 amps or 250 volts there. Here is the composite cord, PlayStation branded. Here is another composite cord, interestingly. Now here's a North American plug. Here's a SingStar uh, camera? I don't know what it is. Must be a mic? Oh yeah, you plug in. Okay, so plug this into one of the USB ports and then you have two microphone jacks there. A PlayStation 1 memory card. The original documentation. And the power brick. And finally, last thing in here, is the PlayStation 2 Slim. Looks identical to any other PlayStation 2 Slim. Gonna have to clean it off a little bit there. But mostly in very good condition. I'm very happy with this. Uh, doesn't look like it's been used a whole lot. Of course, here's your disc area here. And very clean in there. You have your PS2 PlayStation branding there, Sony branding there, of course the matte black plastic, which in my opinion every piece of electronics should be. On the back you have your Ethernet port, your optical out, your AV port, and then your DC in there. Some venting, some venting there. On this side you have the ridges. Again, you could place this vertically if you want, like the original PlayStation 2 fat version, or you could just lay it down. You have your uh, feet, your little rubberized feet. Everything's intact. It doesn't look like this, uh, this has ever been opened. And there's the bottom. This did come with a stand, or not originally, it doesn't come with one, but you can optionally purchase a stand, a little circular disc that fits on the bottom here if you want to place it uh, vertically, but I'll be placing this horizontally. On the front you have your memory card bays here, your controller slots, two USB ports, some more venting, and then your IR receiver in case you do have the remote, which I'm not going to be using. Of course you have your eject button here, 
You have your power button here. And of course, you have your little PlayStation branding there, which rotates. Let's see if I can do it. My fingernails are certainly long enough. I need to cut them. But uh, there you go. You can rotate it depending on which way you have it oriented. Now, when you purchase European electronics, or at least electronics that is sold in the European market, you have to make sure that you don't burn it out when you plug it in because the voltages are different between the two territories. Now, I'm in North America. Obviously, this is a European mainly, but the PAL territories also extend to Australia and whatnot. But generally, you have to make sure that either you get a step-down converter or something that you're not going to burn out your electronics when you plug it into your North American outlet. In this case, I don't have to worry. Now this is a PlayStation 2 Slim North American power brick. This is the PAL power brick. If you look, they're identical. They're both 8.5 volts, and the input on this is 100 to 240 volts. So when I say that these are identical, I mean they're identical. Both have the same end that plugs into the PlayStation 2 and both have the same end that receives the power cord. So again, this is the one that came with the PAL version. Let's put this one to the side just so I can show you what I mean. So here's the European cord. Here's the North American cord. The only way that they differ is the plug, as you can see there. The other end is the same, as you can see there. So this end is the end that plugs into the adapter. Doesn't matter which cord that you have. So this is going to convert all your voltages. You don't need to purchase an additional item in this instance to get this to work in North America. But I can't stress enough that that's not always the case. You definitely want to make sure that you don't put too much current through your devices because not only can you ruin the devices, but you can potentially cause greater damage to your house. So just keep that in mind. So that's going to do it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. If you like what you see, please subscribe. And as always, if you want to help out my channel, give me a thumbs up, favorite this video, or share this video. And hopefully, Michigan Report from Hell is worth all this trouble. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.